Okay. I'd like to call to order the police and uh, fire committee meeting. And today is September 25th and it is 447. We are going to do Pledge of Allegiance again, although we just did it in a committee meeting. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Elder Creighton, could you lead us in a quick prayer again? Sure. Amen. Okay, there is no old business. And, um, well, actually, this is old business. I should have had this under old business instead of new business, which is um, uh, hiring of three firefighters. Uh, I'm going to ask Chief McCain to just explain to the board the need for the firefighters. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, good evening, Mr. Chairman, uh, Mayor Rogers, other members of the Fire and Police Committee, fellow department heads, and most importantly, the residents. On July 11th, uh, this committee met prior uh, to the budget hearing process. And on July 11th, uh, one of the items was the hiring of the three firefighters from the eligibility list, which was initially approved. Unfortunately, during the budget process, those three firemen were cut out of the budget, so I'm back here today to reiterate the same uh, objective of hiring three firemen, which is a necessity, uh, quite a, an importance for our fire department to move forward. We are down to 19 line members, and with injuries, we're down to 17 functioning firefighters, which means excessive work hours toward minimum staffing requirements, as well as excessive overtime hours. And uh, just to reiterate, over the last month, we've had six major fires in town including last night as well as uh, a multiple multitude of ems incidents including extrications and uh, and violent crime that we responded to so it, at this time it's imperative in my opinion to have our staffing increased and hiring of three firefighters uh, seeking the committee's um, um, I want them to move forward with a motion to hopefully approve this and uh, consent and approval of the board and to get formally approved at the next meeting. Okay. Um, right now, uh, we are uh, really in a pinch. What happens if you don't get those firemen? If we Chief. don't get the firemen, we continuously are understaffed at our minimum staffing levels. Um, the Firemen will work excessively, working 20, the right now they typically work a 24 on 48 off schedule. They'll, they'll continue working at 48, 72 hour schedule because of minimum staffing issues. So um, we are the second busiest town in our Mavis division uh, behind Calumet City. Um, we have second behind the city of Harvey as far as working fire incidents within our own community. We cover I-94. And basically the workload is being excessive on our membership so it's becoming a safety issue and at this point in order to eliminate or I'm sorry reduce reduce excessive work hours as well as reduce some of the overtime the hiring of firemen is essential in order for us to meet the demands of the community sure okay I got some numbers to ask you chief I hope you are prepared yes, you, you put down what the base pay minus benefits at about 134000 for the three, correct? Correct, sir. Uh, with benefits, what is the real number for the three? Um, well, not having that number, but going off of what Chief Collins had with his, I would assume it's around that same $35,000, $38,000 number. You'd have to speak with the finance department. And uh, there's also some stip stipends as soon as they become EMTs that are not included in that also. So I'm only going off of base because I'm not sure what the certification levels are of the individuals off the new eligibility list that was just presented today. With, without the three and currently 
you're saying there's more overtime. Is that what you're saying? Yes, sir. Minus the three. Could you do a comparative analysis of the two? In other words, with what currently you have between now and, I guess, May or April, end of April, what would it come to, down to in overtime if we were to bring these three on, in and how it would offset that? I hope my question is... It's no, I'd be more than happy to do comparables of where we were at last year at this time compared to where we're at now when we had the staffing. Um, as far as the, the cost of overtime, uh, you can't really put a, a price right. on as far as the safety of having adequate manpower. So I know some folks uh, believe in the concept of it's cheaper to pay the overtime than hire the individuals with the, with the benefits. Um, that may look good on paper, but becomes a domino effect as far as individuals being overworked, uh, injuries, then being out on injuries. So it'd be in the best interest to hire the three individuals as soon as possible. Okay, again, I'm, I'm looking at this $134,000 amount, and we tack this on to the budget, which has a right now a deficit of about what, $2.8 million. $2 million. I, I'm trying to see how that would figure into this, though. I mean, because those monies can only come out of, you know, GL. Unless I'm reading something different, and it's you're saying it's 134 is really minus uh, benefits, which which include medical and even overtime. And of course, we can't predict overtime with sure. fire or police. But maybe we can add a percentage with 20 percent overtime, something to give us a number, so that when I do talk to Miss Redman, we can get a realistic number of where we're at. I guess to answer your question, I'll be more than happy to sit down with Ms. Redmond and come up with a solution or an answer to your question that would be uh, advantageous. Okay. Thank you. Um, all right. Well, what I'm looking at is uh, I, I, I really think we're going to have to get with Ms. Redmond on the uh, uh, budget there to take a look at what we can do. Um, I know that we do need the firemen, and um, uh, we're going to make every effort to to bring uh, uh, get you what you need right now. I, I, I'm, we really have to look and see where we're going to be able to get that money, because I think the next item that we're going to cover on the agenda might uh, be just as important. Um, Could I take a quick consensus from the board as to what you think about the fire, hiring other firefighters? Trustee Muhammad. Okay, Trustee Denton. I know that the firefighters are definitely needed, and uh, I've been hearing of overtime that's outrageous for the firemen that are doing the job to this date. And we've got to compare the two in our way to see which one would be the better route to take. So I'd like to see some numbers on paper. Um, okay. The next item on the agenda is uh, the purchasing a new fire engine based on a completed IFCA assessment. Uh, Yvonne is not here, I don't think, to ask this question to, but um, I do think that there's enough money that we can take out of the account that we could only use for equipment to put a down payment on this truck. I know that you need uh, equipment very desperately over there in that fire department. Yes, sir. Uh, do you think that you would be able to go back and get it where the village don't have a payment the yep. first year uh, I could do you one better um, I could no down payment and then no note for two years that was one of the uh, one of the conversations I had with one of the vendors I was explaining to him our fiscal dire situation however uh, they were willing at the time before the budget was was discussed or form formalized to uh, potentially bring that up to speed is for me to present in front of the board as far as no down payment and two years of no 
no annual payment. I don't know if that still exists, but I'd be willing to go back and negotiate with several companies, but uh, one of them for sure, that was their stance at that time. So obviously uh, they know our, our situation. They were part of one of the RFPs before. Um, if, if, if you want me to go through the whole RFP process again, I will. I've, we talked about that before uh, when we tentatively approved based on numbers on July 11th. Um, our current budget is starting to get beat up even though we are under budget at this point. I just got another, um, um, I'm sorry, yeah, it's got another budget actually that shows well under budget at this time. However, our current, our new fire engine has been getting beaten up as well because it's running every day as well. So that's out of, and that needs about $11,400 worth of work at this point too. So. Uh, the older fire engines are hanging on by a thread are functioning right now so the it's dire right now the, th that's why i brought those two objectives in today manpower and a fire engine are number one and one a as far as priorities right now so just i i cannot be any more clear with that with this board chief what's the cost of a fire engine uh equipped equipped uh, um, an approximate cost if you, if you go with just a basic cookie cutter fire engine with um with um, the equipment in it, uh, the last RFPs were, were around five hundred fifty thousand dollars, fully equipped, up to six hundred thousand, depending on what you get. So if the engine's around three to three hundred fifty to four hundred thousand dollars, you get another hundred to one hundred fifty thousand dollars fully equipped. So it would not affect our uh, our budget as far as taking money out of the general fund. You can finance the whole thing. And once you give the okay, if we gave you the okay, <clears throat> how long would it take to get an engine from order to the door? It depends if there's demos available. If not, they have to create a custom one, which could take four months. Okay. Chief, is that the ladder truck? No, that's just a basic cookie cutter fire engine. However, the Quint concept was something else that would be near and dear to my heart as well. Uh, I talked with the mayor about it, Trustee Pearson, I've talked to you about it in the past where it's almost a two for one. It's, a, it's an engine with a ladder on top. So that would be one of the vehicles that we're looking at so you can kill two birds at one stone. Because a lot of time, because we don't have staffing, we don't get our ladder truck out because we have two guys at station one, two guys at station two, they both bring engines because we need the water and they function as one company on the scene when they get there. So we have to utilize out of town companies as having their ladder truck, which is South Holland citywide. Our ladder truck uh, typically doesn't get out unless I have manpower back on a general alarm or if it's going out of town or if our engines are down, then it's running front line. Okay, like you said, you've done more than one presentation. Can we have those numbers before our next board meeting? We can put it on the agenda. Certainly. The, especially the one you said with no down payment, and let us know in a year or two what that payment would be. We would need a down payment in the, in the year. Did you say a year or two? The one company I spoke with was no down payment and no payment for two years. That was, however, if do you want me to do an RFP then? No. I, no okay. No. Just bring, if we can get okay. that, and that way we can approve it. Okay. If we, if I mean, if my vote would be yes, yeah, based upon that, yes. The consent, I want to take the consensus okay. now okay. of uh, the board. Right. Uh, my vote is yes, that we go ahead and uh, move forward with the fire engine. Trustee Dent. Okay, so uh, we'll recommend to the full board that we move forward to purchase this fire engine. Uh, and we'll explain to the board that it's no cost in the first year, possibly, maybe even two. Right. But we'll, you'll go back and you'll see what's available out there. Right. In the event that that deal was taken off the table, because that was about two months ago. Yes. Okay. And then if it is, and we do have funds available okay. that uh, are not going to come out of the general fund. Okay. It's going to come out of an account where you can only use it for equipment. Gotcha. Very good. Um, now, you had potential uh, revenue ideas. Yes, sir. I'd like you to just briefly explain that to the board. Certainly. On June 23rd, uh, Ms. Redmond did pass out these ideas via email to, to the entire board, and I'll just kind of go through some of these. I, uh, I also sent them again because I thought they were something that should be looked at again in our fiscal, uh, with our issues financially. Uh, one of them was... Fire Recovery, that's a company that's out there that does billing for fire responses. Uh, basically, based on Dalton's numbers, what they were looking at was it was approximately 180,000 and some change, and they take 20%, so they would leave us with a net income of $144,521 based on them doing the billing for our fire responses. Uh, they do quite a few area uh, departments in the area. I don't have uh, comparables, but uh, 
basically they bill for uh, services rendered for vehicle accidents, vehicle fires, uh, helicopters that respond like we did on I-94 a couple weeks ago, false fire alarms, fires themselves, hazardous conditions, and special rescues. Now, mind you, there is an ordinance in place, 13-005, uh, that, that does reflect this, but there was a couple uh, issues that need to be resolved with that. So. Uh, moving forward, after I do a little research and a little bit of looking at this, make an amendment with that ordinance to reflect the changes and with this company. As you move down to the next sheet, it'll show you basically the type of incidents that we responded to, and that's how they came up with their numbers based on 2015 numbers, because I had this done last year. Any questions with that? This um, sample that yes. recovery gave us, what was this a zone? Was this a, 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 an area, a particular area? This was our, our call volume. This is Village of Dalton Fire Department responses in 2015. Okay, now I'm talking about the emergency incident recovery forecast, the forecast that yes. they're making. So when they say 90% collected, they have a history of collecting 90%? Not for the village Money's at all. on a call. I would assume with the other towns. So the towns that they've, that they've done, what are the towns that they currently? I, I don't know all of them off the top of my head, but I'd be more than happy to get that information before I can forward it to you. But okay. they do quite a bit. I do know that. Let me make sure I understand this as a lay person. I'm in an yeah. um, accident on the Bishop Ford. Mm-hmm. And the police um, use the jaws of life to cut me out. Fire department, yes, sir. And I'm taken to the hospital or whatever. I, yes, of course, sir. I get a bill from the ambulance taking me there. Yes. And I'll get a bill from the hospital. And a bill from the fire department for responding. And, oh, now it'll be a bill from the hospital. So wh where does that transaction take place with uh, the fire, fire department? The fire department would gather your information, get your VIN number, get your license plate, your car, and we send it to the billing company. And then okay, they and they'll do the, Dalton is not involved at that process. No. It's, it's seamless then. No, the administrative assistant would just generate the information that's getting from the firemen who are on the call and send it all in. So that's where the, that's why they take their twenty percent because they process everything. And so, is this like standardly done? Well? I'll get I'll get all the communities that they do. I do okay. so I do know that they do Calumet Park and I do know that they do Riverdale off the top of my head. I'll get everyone else for you guys as well. Cool. Well, I think I think we should move forward uh, with the uh, revenue ideas. Uh, is there, was this the only idea? Uh, no, sir. I also have a couple more items. Okay, proceed. Uh, the next one, um, I apologize. Yvonne put this together when she sent it through. I just re-forwarded it. It shows uh, one of the billing companies for if we had our own ambulance here, which is something that's been near to, dear to my heart for the last two and a half years. And it basically estimated some of the call volume there as far as what's paid out by Medicare, Medicaid, private insurance, commercial insurance. Uh, the, the next sheet is another company that showed Dalton based on 1,300 calls. Basically, if we staffed one ambulance, it would take, you know, half of our billable calls. And then it shows comparables with Elsip, Richmond Park, Country Club Hills. So basically, the, the range on per call, it, it, they they do a they do an analysis of the area of what has been paid out. So our per call volume would be a little bit lower, but basically one company indicated 283 and the other company indicated 415,000. If we build for one, one, if we had one ambulance and we kept the contract with Buds, which they currently have two ambulances that are um, um, based on their contract with us. So, so basically that was an idea as far as uh, recouping costs for manpower and most importantly, getting another ambulance on the street. It, it has no bearing on what BUDS is doing. I'm not saying anything negative about BUDS or anything like that. It's just in my opinion, our call volume is escalating. We have that ambulance donated to us. We need to utilize it and utilize our manpower to the best of its ability. So that's why it's also important to hire as well to staff that ambulance to get it on the street. What, what, would, it, uh, what would the cost be to staff it? and equip it that would have to be negotiated and at one point we were no negotiating having a part-time ambulance program so if you paid part-timers 1250 an hour for a period of time it was basically about 219,000 for uh, i'm sorry for a fiscal year and then any administrative or operational cost about another fifty thousand dollars so that was just uh um and we're waiting for a grant to get a cardiac monitor as well. So there's a lot of things on the table right now regarding this. Okay. But there is monies to recoup, and the most importantly, just getting another ambulance 
another ambulance on the street for just dedicated to our town. And if we had that ambulance on the street, would the fire engine still go on these calls or just? Not for BLS calls. The fire engine would still go for any cardiac respiratory traumas. But as far as the stub toe call, the headache toe, the battery victim, uh, minor calls that are uh, BLS orientated, uh, they would not go on unless they were called out by the ambulance if it had to be uh, escalated to an ALS call. So it, it would reduce wear and tear on the fire engines going on every medical run as well as some fuel costs. Now, Chief, if those, if those, um, those cardiac calls, yes. if the qualified paramedics were on, on staffing the ambulance, the fire, uh, the fire engines wouldn't have to go either, would they? They would still have to go for manpower because if it's an ALS cardiac call, you have to have four people on the scene. So okay. you have two people on the ambulance, two people on, on the fire engine for a BL. So you have to have a minimum of two medics and two EMTs for cardiac calls. And uh, the Fire Ops 101 video that we had, that presentation that, that uh, talked about uh, the NFPA standards regarding that. Okay, for the ambulance you're proposing, yeah. and you mentioned part-time, are we yes. talking two individuals? Two individuals per day, but that has to be negotiated. That okay. was just a ballpark number that has to be negotiated with the union, because currently there is no part-timers in the collective bargaining agreement. Okay. Is, is this something, since our uh, negotiations are actually coming up for your unit soon, is that something you would like to propose in the upcoming contract, even though it hasn't been finalized just for a projection in future? Uh, that was kind of the catch-22 I was at. That's I was trying to get this taken right. care of first and then move right. forward with that. So okay. it all depends on, uh, you know, how it would be something to definitely talk about with Attorney Murphy to bring up to the okay. union. Okay. I would love to see it in your contract, and if we can get some part-time persons, uh, of course, they'd be part of the union, they'd be part of Firehouse 1 or 2. Does it matter? It'd be, we would staff the ambulance out of Station 2, but like I said, it has to be mutually agreed upon in, okay. in the CBA, and they would not be CBA members because they would be part-time for the ambulance for a period of time. And then over time, like, depending on how negotiations went, you know, create full-time paramedic positions here as well. So Thank we you. want to be able to get the best service for our residents. Okay, I think that uh, uh, we'll do a little bit more talking with you. We'll, we'll uh, try to get in to see you, Chief, and sure. go into a little bit more detail with that. It's It definitely sounds like a good idea to do. Again, I don't know. Uh, we have to look at the manpower because that's an issue with the budget right now. It's a very, very, very tight budget. But uh, I like the idea of Dalton having its own ambulance. Uh, and would like to see us make that happen. Yes. Um, any other ideas, Chief? Yeah, in, a, in addition to that, there, there was a different way of doing the emergency medical service if, with our ambulance, and that would be an emergency medical service tax. It was just an outside-the-box idea. Instead of billing when we respond, instead of billing individuals for responding, uh, please no one yell at me, it's just an idea, but um, and it, almost like an impact fee, a tax of $3 per month to be added onto a water bill and be allocated for EMS services. And that came out based on 8,000 water meters to about $288,000 a year. So it'd almost be an umbrella where everyone shared the wealth instead of being billed for responses when we, when we respond to calls. Oh, I see. So it's uh, outside the box idea to create revenue for EMS services and manpower. All right, well, that idea um, it sounds like something that we could talk about okay just just a thought again i I know the water bills has been a hot and heavy topic, but I was figuring that was probably the best way to get it out, but instead of getting billed a thousand dollars for an ambulance, it's just three dollars a month i I know it believe me i I pay my own water bill too, and it's it stinks, but if something towards this to improve services in the community. Something to think and you about. said three dollars a month. That, yeah, that was just what I yes. put together. And that would okay. equal two hundred eighty-eight thousand. Just something to create revenue for EMS services. And it would be ongoing. Correct. And all of these are great ideas. Uh, they're money-generating ideas, and they're uh, not huge uh, ideas that would cost the taxpayers uh, a, a lot of money. Three dollars is. is uh, a small amount, although added on to a water bill, is a huge amount sure. to some resident. I, right. I mean, I, I'm sympathetic to that as well. It was just an idea that would be the best way to get it out there. Uh, All right. Well, we'll talk, we'll talk a little bit more in depth on that.
And uh, I got one continue. more. Continue. Okay. Uh, one more is uh, uh, amendment of our fire code regarding uh, central station fire alarm maintenance. Uh, basically, um, having funding available for doing a having all the commercial and industrial alarms go through one central station where you can create a, a fee to, um, to a maintenance fee. So a monthly fee or every six month fee of whatever number you wanted to utilize as far as our current vendor buds, which does our dispatching where it all goes in through there, but we're able to maintain and have all the monies, uh, have all the commercial industrial properties have their alarm system go through a company one or two different companies so it's not creating a, a monopoly but to have it all be centrally located in the one and it goes into one board because right now one of the problems that we have um, sometimes the problem sometimes it's not there's might be five or six different alarm companies and they may not be going into the alarm system so there's a delay because it's through a phone line where someone's fire alarm may go off they has to go to ABC alarm company, ABC alarm company gets the alarm, they got to call a dispatch center, say you got a fire alarm or a burglar alarm or whatever going off at such mm -hmm. and such residence. So there's a delay in time. I'm trying to cut out the middleman where it just goes into one century located. I got to do a little more research on it. I got to talk to Chief Collins a little bit more on the police and how that would work. But there's another revenue idea uh, as far as just for commercial industrial uh, we're looking at, and this was previously talked about with the previous uh, village administrator for about $142,000 of fees that can be brought in. That's not including any residential rental, rental property fire alarms and uh, residential fire inspections, annual Knox box maintenance fees, and any fire alarm nuisance fees that are out there. If we go to a certain place three or four times, you could bill them for nuisances for showing up there. And we're not doing that either, so for false alarms. So the research that you're doing with Chief Collins, it would be what the cost of the infrastructure would be. The infrastructure and, and how much money he, he, the police could generate with that as well. All right, so it would be combined police and fire. Sure, absolutely. Okay. So both of you are working on that together. You got a, a window uh, when it can be done, 90 no, I just days. I told him about it right now. Last week. <laughs> this is due to him. I'm loving it. <laughs> All right, thank you. All right. Now that idea I actually like a lot because... Um, It'll cut response time, Correct. and it could be one incident where you cut the response time that could really save somebody's life, so that makes it all worth doing. So uh, I look forward to talking to you about that, uh, and uh, we'll, we'll come to see you this week. Okay. I don't know if you can get it that, done that quick, but we'll come to see you. Sounds good. Chief, was that the last thing you had? Nope, I just cannot reiterate manpower and fire trucks it's the okay. last thing thank you well you got your fire truck that's All right. that's, that's a good thing <laughs> okay uh, uh before okay. we go to police i'm going to I, I sort of skip something here uh approval of minutes uh, you trustees get the minutes yes okay i i uh like a motion to approve the minutes from What was that? July 11th, 2017. Well, I was asking for a motion. I make a motion to approve the minutes. I second. Okay, uh, with the uh, motion by Trustee Muhammad and second by Trustee Denton, uh, a committee man, I should say. Um, I'll call the roll. Trustee Muhammad? Aye. Trustee Denton? Right. And Trustee Pearson, aye. So the minutes are adopted, and I'll move for moving forward to uh, Clerk Dugan. Next, next on the agenda is the hiring of three police officers. It's a total of six that the chief is asking for. Uh, chief, I'll let you explain uh, what you'd like to do. Thank you. Uh, good evening. Uh, may I give you handouts for illustrative purposes? Thank you, Chief. 
and I'll explain, uh, explain what these documents are. Um, but what I like to do is kind of give a, a bird's eye view of the correlation between the types of crime that we're experiencing and manpower and how that has an impact on it. So as comparables I used, uh, our, our definite comparables are South Holland, Riverdale, Calumet City, and Chicago because of the close proximity. On this first document I gave you is a report that I gave back on February 6, uh, 2017, in which it was a wrap up of what we did in 2016. Uh, we responded to uh, 24,279 calls for service, which equates to almost 66 calls per day. We made 923 physical arrests, issued 2,406 traffic citations. Uh, an untold number of parking citations, and actually filed 4,441 written reports, which is quite a bit. This is a busy community. That is. Um, just to bring it in a little bit closer, in the last two weeks, that was, a, that was one year. In the last two weeks alone, um, we've had 21 shots fired calls. Within that 21 shots fired calls are three homicides um, by firearm, and we also had the advanced auto parts attempted robbery in which the uh, armed robber was shot and ultimately uh, died of his wounds. Is that part of that three? That is not part of the three. Okay. So moving on to the actual document of the map. Now, considering the size of Dalton, which is approximately just less than five square miles, um, it is almost the same size as a district in Chicago. There are some larger districts, there are some smaller districts, but there is areas in Chicago where the size of the village of Dalton can fit inside a district. And if you understand, yeah. and if you understand the type of crime that Chicago is experiencing, we are experiencing the same type of crime. And the crime that I'm talking about is the violent crime. We're always gonna have the burglaries, the car thefts, the batteries, the, uh, the regular thefts, things like that. But I'm talking about violent crime, which we get our fair share of. On the document that lists, it's actually the third doc, fourth document in, the document that lists the districts um, I have in written in the square mileage of a particular district. One of the closest comparisons by crime and by population and by size is the Austin district. And not that we'll ever have these resources, but for illustrative purposes, this is a type of resources that the city of Chicago throws to particular districts. If you go down the list, Austin, it's a little bit more than halfway down. In that one particular district, which is almost four square miles, there are 350 Chicago police officers assigned to that one district. That equates to 91 officers per square mile. Wow. Um, and like I said, not that we'll ever get to that or that we um, will ever have those type of resources, but it takes those type of resources to actually handle that type of crime. What we have today as far as our staffing levels is we are staffed at a level of a small town that doesn't have that type of crime, when the reality is we experience that type of crime every day. Um, and those, those staffing levels and the requirements go back to years and years and years when um, evaluations were done of how should you staff police departments relative to the um, size of the population. And the old school way was there should be one officer per 1,000 residents. For us, that would be 24. Here's how we're at that level right now. We are at 44 officers, that's from the chief all the way down to the, uh, the last hired full-time patrol officer. What's assigned to patrol division is 29 officers. So we are almost at that level of what, we've been, what would have been many, many years ago from the early 70s, 80s. And like I said, that's for small towns that experience nothing. Because we experience so much, Globally, what we should be looking at, and I understand I asked for three officers. I know where the budget is. I know where that, that the money really doesn't exist for it, but I want to paint this picture of reality so that we can start thinking globally of where we should be. 
we should start thinking of terms of doubling the size of the police department to handle the types of crimes that we're ha uh, having. In the wintertime, it slows down a lot, but we still get violent crime in the winter. It picks up in the spring, it carries on through the summer, and these last three weeks has been especially violent. Um, we've had the, um, the, the shooting across the street. There's just so much that's been going on. We should start thinking about staffing the police department at levels to handle this type of crime. Otherwise, we're gonna keep experiencing this over and over and over. Now, our problem, uh, one of our, one of our uh, dilemmas and problems is We've hired 13 officers since 2017, but we've lost 11 officers. So we're, we're, not, we're not replacing these officers. And of course, that's due to the budget, and we all understand that. But we, start, we have to start thinking in terms of public safety and how we're gonna get these officers back out on the street to start patrolling these neighborhoods. Okay. Um. Chief, uh, we've talked to, uh, I've talked to uh, several of the board members and several residents and everybody is on board with police, not to shun fire uh, because both are equally as important, but with the recent homicides, uh, everybody is so concerned and they're really uh, reaching out to the trustees. Uh, at least they're reaching out and letting me know to please move forward with hiring. And all the, I don't know where we're going to get the money because um, this budget is real. But I do know that uh, we're going to hire these three uh, based on the, uh, uh, my conversations with the trustees. But it's going to be a big struggle to come up with um, and, and not the current, uh, right now, this month, mm -hmm. uh, next month, but uh, the latter months of the year, the first part of next year, it's going to get tough. But we're hoping that we can uh, find the money somewhere. Um, I don't know if any of the trustees have anything they want to, any questions they want to ask. Uh, so I'll pass the mic down to uh, Trustee Muhammad. Okay, hey, Chief, I, I guess I, my question can connect into the next couple items, which I'm sure you'll go into, which is the status of police officers on light duty and sick leave, and also the uh, police officer that is, that is assigned to the mayor. Um, you need six. I'm trying to find out, um, if we talk about um, the budget for 2018, you would permanently, so I understand, you would permanently like to add you would like to permanently add six police officers to your unit? Yes, sir. Overall, six to begin with. Okay. So um, we know what the cost of those six officers would be. It would be the same question that I gave um, Chief McCain. Uh, and I'm sure you know what the, those numbers are um, with benefits and the like. Uh, is there any chance of the officers that are on light duty or sick leave and without violating any HIPAA laws, we would know that number that will be coming in to reduce that number of six that we um, would need to hire? Could, could you answer that publicly? I can. Um, without names and actual diagnoses um, with these officers, I uh, initially reported that we had eight officers that were out on various stages of either sick or injured on duty and off duty mm -hmm. and um, not being available uh, as full time on the street officers. Several were working light duty. In fact, some still are working light duty. We've had three officers return back to full duty. One of those officers is expected to have um, a, a surgery scheduled. So he's back full time temporarily until he has his surgery and then he'll be out for a little while after that. Um, I have one officer that is still waiting for another evaluation. It is doubtful that he will return this year or even at all. Uh, another officer that is out for another uh, evaluation. Um, he may return, I just don't have an update or a prognosis. Um, one officer is healing from a broken bone who should return probably within the next one to two months. That's uh, being hopeful. And also, 
uh, another officer who is out from a uh, broken bone in the uh, operational hand, um, and he may be out for another month or two. And one officer who is undergoing uh, certain sessions who is expected to return, and that would probably be within the month or at one month. So based on these numbers that I've took notes on, there are three possibly coming back between one and three months. You got one return, maybe one to two months. You said one with a hand issue, maybe a um, couple months, and then the third one, maybe a month. So if we did it conservatively, we'd say one, one to three months. Is it? It's possible that you may have three officers back full t on in, fu in full gear, ready to go. That is a correct assessment. Okay, so if that was the case, um, those three coming back, uh, you would still need six on top of that, or you're talking about maybe three more once these three come back? The, the initial report, um, when I did say how many we hired and how many lo we lost, mm -hmm. that would still be the same number. However, the number I reported that it, that's out sick or injured is on top of that number. So that number is almost doubled. So we would still need the manpower even after all of these officers would return back, if they would return back. Okay, I'm, I'm tempted to say something that's not politically expedient, and I know the residents are not gonna like this, but as I stated earlier in the previous committee, to me it's not about getting points and what's politically right or expedient, but what's right. I believe that you need the officers, um, Chief Collins, without a doubt. We've sat with you on more than one occasion. You went through the numbers with myself and Trustee Pearson. It has to be paid for. In this current budget, we don't have it. You know, we have to increase revenues in order to pay for public safety. You raise revenues through taxes, what we call a, a tax levy by raising it, fees and the like or you raise it by layoffs. Layoffs doesn't sound well, nor does paying uh, more taxes. But on our board meeting coming up in October, we will have some finance people to illustrate to the village where we at financially. This is real. We can hear the ums and the oohs and like I say the got you's, but let me say something about this village that's real. I'll be a broken record and you may not like it and at this point, I really don't care because it's the truth. I'm not here to get votes, I'm here to do the right thing. We have a $3 million payment due December. In that account is about $1,000. This board has a deficit over $2 million. The taxes that we collect for this year have, been, have come and gone. We have a um, TIF districts that have not even paid their taxes. This is something that's real, and we'll have a person giving that presentation here, not at the first board meeting in October, but God willing, the second one, and we'll go over every line item in this budget. I would love to give the officers hire right now. We just don't have the money for it. We don't. And, but I'm telling you, there's a way that we can do it, and it's by raising the tax levy. We don't want to hear it, but that's the honest to God's truth. Now, if we get a big box store in here or some big box stores in here, that's fine. But with the operation that's going right now, nobody wants to say it, but I'm going to say it as the uh, chairman of the finance department. I keep hearing this magical term, find the money. Let's find it. Tell me where you're going to find it at. Just tell me. We'll take suggestions. That's why I appreciate you, Chief McCain. All the department heads were asked by Ms. Redmond to come up with some ideas. We asked the mayor, who does not cooperate with us not one iota now that, we've asked, know, let me finish that you said it wasn't let me political finish. let me finish let me that finish you said it wasn't political okay well we got the chief here mayor okay please no outbursts you'll <clears throat> right. have a chance to say it but let me explain what i'm saying <laughs> as i just stated we ask all departments to please give us some input this mayor refuses to cooperate i've asked him Verbally, in a public meeting, I've asked them in a letter. We need your help to come up with ideas for revenue. That's you why I appreciate it. After you Mayor, would you budget. please, would you please stop interrupting? This is Trustee Pearson's committee. Out of, do, out of deep respect, would you please well, stop quit interrupting? Quit lying on me. Quit lying on me. No, I don't lie, Mayor. Yeah, okay. We're not going to go back yeah, and forth okay. on no personal. Right, okay. yes, Mayor is out of order. Yeah, okay. 
okay, as I was stating, and I'm, and I'm telling you the truth, <laughs> the police department needs six officers. One of them he can have right now. That's the bodyguard for the mayor. I don't have a bodyguard. Well, again, the memo that I received, he's security and transportation for the mayor. That's from the chief. Now, the chief just explained the number of officers that we need on the street. I'm not holding back any punches anymore. You all need to know what the financial status of this city or, or village is. I know you need these officers. But in order to pay for this, we need to evaluate which officers are coming back, which are not, which are driving the mayor around or being his security that should be out in the streets. But we need these officers. And we need to know if the officer that's doing security for the mayor and transportation for the mayor is even qualified to put on a suit. <laughs> because in the, the, since I've been here in 2013, I've never seen this individual in a uniform. Mm -hmm. now, I'm just telling you the actual truth. You're not getting no lies from here. Everything I'm telling you is based upon what I know from Chief Collins. There's nothing that I'm making up, and everything I'm telling you is from Ms. Redman and other persons that have looked at this budget. I would love to give you all the uh, firemen that you need, Chief. I would love to give the police department all that they need, but right now, we don't have it. And the only way we would get it for next year is a tax levy. Okay, Mayor. For your information, I don't have a bodyguard. <clears throat> but. Chief, why don't you explain to him in the contract what the contract says, if I did want a bodyguard? There are provisions that uh, police officers can be assigned for security details um, on any village official and also at the village hall. So there are provisions in case um, there were um, opportunities or circumstances that required. And prior to me coming into office, there's always been a police officer assigned to City Hall. Always. And the previous mayors have had police officers sitting in front of the house on their security details. And not to mention that I've received a number of death threats in one last week that I shared with the, with the chief. And that police officer just doesn't do work for me. That police officer takes care of the fleet of the police department. And we had, when I came into office, we had seven engines that were out of service on police cars. Because you know why? We didn't have a fleet person. People just got in the cars and they drove the cars with, car, with the motors knocking. We have not lost one engine since we've had a person taking care of the fleet. And that's a huge job. So that's one of his duties, besides performing other duties in the mayor's office. So there's a provision, I'm, I'm totally legal, there's a provision that allows me to have a bodyguard if I wanted one. I've got several death threats that I've shared with the police department, and there's been reports that have been made that if I wanted a bodyguard, I can have a bodyguard. Mayor, but that's for elected officials. We all could have a bodyguard, well, I guess, but we, we, the, the village needs the officers out on the streets. And I'm not doing anything that I need protection. Why do you need protection like that? But you, uh, I don't but understand if, that. If I wanted to have a bodyguard 24 hours a day, I'm allowed to have one. I don't do that. Yeah, but just because the contract states you could have one, that doesn't mean that the that the board approves of uh, the, of you having it's, one. It's not whether the it's board approves It's something that's in not. the contract. It's not just it's, a provision that allows it, it if the board approves it. There have been credible death threats towards me. That that's enough to allow it. Okay, I just wonder why you got those death threats. Go to other other municipalities and and check on the the police officers that are assigned to the village halls. Yeah, but look at the mess the village is in. I know, it, it, I know you're saying the prior administrations did this and did that, but that's why things are so screwed up because of some of the things prior administrations doing. We're trying to do better. We, right. don't, we don't want to do like past administrations. Right. I have. I am exposing myself to potential debt uh, to threats that are creditable credible threats and I don't have a bodyguard 24 hours a day okay uh, yeah I didn't want to prolong this that was that is a, I, I still stand that that person that's doing the fleet 
uh, and doing the duties in your office that our chief is unaware of, by the way. And if anyone should know what that person is doing. Ask the chief to ask me that. Um, again, when I state something, I'm not speaking from a vacuum. I have meetings with the chief of police. And this is not to put the chief on point, because we don't need to ask him any questions. If I state I've it, had meetings I, with the chief. OK, let me finish. And I explain everything to Mayor, you. Mayor, let's try to have a respectful meeting where we're not interrupting one another. Yeah, I won't right. interrupt you mm -hmm. if you don't interrupt me. We talked about this at the I'm last saying, meeting. I got and the floor. You're talking about you don't want to make it political. That's I exactly floor, what Mayor. this is. Mayor, okay? I got the floor. I've got. I've got a person assigned to the mayor's office. Mayor, this is not your committee, It is mayor. not unusual for any municipality. Your person, I have the floor the and the mayor is out of order. Okay, can I finish, mayor? I'm done with it. Okay, as the I police was officer stating. is assigned to the mayor's office in the story. Okay, as I was stating, we need all, as many officers on the street as possible. Mayor, we are asking you to help in this village is working for a team. If you would release that individual for the chief so that we can cut down on some of this crime that's happening in the village. And that's funny. Yeah, and yeah, that's well, funny. that's okay. This is being recorded, uh, trustee, and hopefully the mayor won't edit this or take this down with our uh, village uh, media person. But the public needs to know this is public information, and for the sake of transparency, they need to know that the mayor has walked out of this meeting because he's angry for whatever reason. But I'm going to state the truth regards to whom or what. We need as many police officers on the street as possible. If we got a police officer that takes vehicles to a mechanic, that's not an eight-hour piece. We've discussed this with the chief. If you got someone that's doing security work for the mayor, he's a part-time mayor, not a 40-hour-per-week mayor. Even though he wants a raise of $100,000, he's not here for 40 hours a week that he should be getting $100,000 a year. We need that officer on the street. So that's what I wanted to state. So that officer that's on the agenda that states the item number, police officer assigned to the mayor, I would like this board to vote that that police officer should be part of that number that the chief wants as far as the six officers are concerned because he's already in the budget reporting directly to the mayor. Okay. Um, I, I also agree that he should be on the street. Um, you know, we just don't have the luxury of assigning somebody to, I mean, we all could take, uh, we're, we're elected officials. Okay, no outbursts, please. We will have, we will have citizens address. Okay, I'm going to ask you, no outbursts. Um, I don't think that any elected official should have anybody assigned to them. We can't afford it right now. Other people might think that it's okay, but it's not because we don't have the money to pay for officers. I mean, like I said, every trustee has the right to ask for an officer to be assigned to him, but we don't do that. So my vote is that he uh, he goes back into the police, the rank of the with the police chief, Trustee Denton. I agree. Trustee Muhammad, you agree? Trustee Denton, they care to comment? No okay. So, um, I know you say we don't have the money, Trustee Muhammad, and I agree. I know the finances of this village. But my vote to take to the board is that we uh, hire three police officers. Uh, we find out how we're going to do it. And when the time comes that we have to talk about raising that tax levy, that's just what we're going to have to talk about because we can't say no and we have people getting shot in our community. We have to find a way to make it work. Um, and we could look at legally what we can do to get uh, this officer back into uh, his daily job, but uh, right now, uh, I think we should hire the three. So I'm going to ask for a consensus vote uh, on hiring the three officers. Uh, Trustee Denton? I agree. You agree? Trustee Muhammad? Stand. Okay. Uh, abstentions go with uh, 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 the majority, which was two. So 
will take that to the whole board. This is not an official vote because you can't vote at a committee meeting to take any action. It has to be done by the full board. So I don't want anybody to think that the board just voted to hire six police, that, I mean three police officers, that will happen at the next board meeting. It will be on the agenda. And then we will see if we move forward with it, uh, with, with, with the majority vote at the board. Um, I think that's it on the agenda. Yes. So it's time for citizens' address. Anybody that wants to speak uh, can take the uh, stand up at the podium, and we will uh, hold up to three minutes. Beth McBride speaking, resident of Dalton, Illinois, for 18 years. My question is regarding the application on our mobile phones to notify the police department of any activities and I wanted further clarification about that application because of the crime activity in our neighborhood. May I have um, more clarification about how quickly the police department sees the things that are put on the application? Okay, is that the full question? The mobile app is not for in-progress calls, um, as, we, as we stated at prior meetings. The best thing to do for in-progress is to call 911. That is the fastest way. What the mobile app does is gives you an opportunity to report situations. And let's say there's a situation, let's use a, a, a safety situation. Let's say a stop sign is down or something like that. You can report that. You even have the ability to take a photograph of it with the geolocation so we know exactly where it is. Or if you want to report anonymously conditions that are going on, there's a uh, drug dealing going on at such and such address, and list everything that you know about it. Um, and what that information does, it goes into the system and then it hits an email. Now, email is just like any regular other e email. It depends on when the person looks at it. I am the first one to get the emails. And the emails come day, they come night, they come weekend, they come on holidays, whatever the case may be. But I'm not at work 24 hours a day. I'll do my best to get the information to the street supervisor, which is a lieutenant or a sergeant. However, things that we can follow up on once we return back to work on Monday, we'll follow back up on. Emergency things should always go to the 911 system first. Thank you for that response. Okay, police, uh, police chief Collins. Okay, is tic uh, collecting tickets and enforcing ordinance is that one way to collect revenue for your department? Arrest tickets, parking tickets, traffic tickets, red light tickets is all designed for public safety. However, that being said, one of the motivating factors or an incentive to get people to comply is to attach a fine with things. So we are not a fine driven, we're not a payment driven municipality. We are a public safety driven municipality, but things are paid out of fines. When people pay their fines, that money goes into the, uh, the, the general account and bills are paid, salaries or whatever the case, however the village functions. But we're not a fine driven. We write and issue citations in hopes of compliance. Okay, the reason I asked this question, I think we had this conversation once before. Uh, in the month of July, five times someone blocked my, my driveway, so I could not get out. I was inconvenienced. I paid taxes. But as a resident of Dalton, believe me, they gave me a ticket for being legally parked in front of my house. Now, when they come out to talk to the people who block my driveway, now, if I have an emergency, I'm just out of luck. I'm going to either have to drive on the sidewalk and deal with the consequences later. Okay? They come out. They don't ticket to people. They look for them. They call them. Then they look for them. I wasn't given that courtesy when parked in front of my house. I had to go to court. I had to take all my information showing that I pay my 
for my sticker, for my license place, I pay them on time because I do not like to be fined. It's cheaper that way. So I just want to know if we enforce some of these ordinances, littering. You guys have a big committee going around picking up paper. Okay, one of the ways you can get that done is to give people tickets. People are going to throw garbage out the window. Especially since I'm staying with my mom now on 156th Street, just Friday. Little kids just took some paper, tore it all up in 50 million pieces, and just littered the whole, the whole sidewalk. Who do you think had to pick that up? And if you said, I said something, I said, you guys need to pick the paper up. I ain't picking up nothing. We need to give these people tickets. I understand you're not wanting to give them, but if you can sit and give a residence a $500 ticket for an outburst because they can't speak their piece, I don't know why you can't give a person a $750 for throwing paper out the window. I sit in food for less and watch somebody actually clean out their cars and throw it right on the ground. So it doesn't matter. I understand what you're trying to do, Mr. Pearson. I, I applaud that. But something else need to be taken on, actually need to be taken on top of that. Either the, I know you're short of police officers. It'd probably be an expense to get those little cams. Maybe have the officer purchase himself and take it off the income tax. You can do things like that. When anything is work related, you can take off your income tax. However it may be done. But we need to take actions. And hold these residents accountable for what they do. That's why the, that's why the, this, this whole area has changed since 1992 when I moved in. Okay, it was a lot more accountability. You didn't have this. You go outside of Dalton, I think you mentioned this before, Mr. Pearson. You go outside of Dalton, you don't see paper like you see here. You don't see it. You really just don't see it. On 156th Street, I have driven down there, someone had just put up just a bag of garbage, just threw it in, in the middle of the street. I pick up garbage every day in front of my mother's house. We need to find these people and get revenue for this town. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, may I address this? Yes, you may. Okay, so there, there is a perception that police don't write tickets or whatever. I, I read a report from what we did in that one yearly for 2016. These officers are extremely busy. I, I have to applaud these officers. They are out there doing their jobs, and they are very good at it. And you have a great bunch of officers working for the village of Dalton. I, I kid you not. I, I would promote that high and low. Just because you don't see them at a particular moment, like when you see p people throwing trash and things out of, their, out of their window, if there's not an officer around to see that, then there's no way that they're going to be issued a citation. Now, you mentioned that people should be held accountable for their actions. People are written, issue, they are issued citations, and just like you said yourself, you were issued a citation. I don't know what it was for, but people are held for their, their acts, held accountable for their actions. In particular, to address your thing about the driveway, yes, we had a conversation about your driveway. Um, one of my big things is if someone is blocking someone's driveway, that officer should make an effort to find out who's blocking it and then ask them to move it. If they can't find them, then they issue the ticket. And if they, they don't come out while the ticket's being written, if it's completely blocking the driveway, then tow the car. So that's, that's a standard protocol. And the officers do have discretion on if they issue a ticket or not. It's probably far better to be compassionate sometimes and have people just comply by asking them not to do something or to do something. Or sometimes when you see a car that doesn't have a village sticker on it, it's deliberate violation of the, uh, um, of the uh, village ordinance. Write a ticket. There should be no compassion in that. Everyone who has a car that lives in the village of Dalton, they should have a village sticker. If they don't have it, then shame on them. They're going to be issued a ticket. Um, but innocent things of blocking driveways and things like that, yeah, the officer can have some compassion on. They go out there, they write the speeding tickets, they write the stop sign tickets. I see people blowing stop signs when I'm in my private car. So I know that it's happening all over town. There's a thousand stop signs in the village of Dalton, but there's not a thousand officers to police those stop signs. But they are out there, they're issuing, um, and, if, and, and it's not about trying to drive up revenue because of the issuance of these tickets. We just want people to do what they're supposed to do. Well, I understand. The ticket I received, I was parked in front of my house legally. The ticket was for no sticker. I had a current sticker, village sticker. I had a cur current license plate sticker. 
So I still to this day don't know why I got the ticket. Other than going to court and explaining and had to take pictures, taking time off my day. I'm not saying build revenue by giving out tickets, but make people accountable for what they do. And to you, maybe blocking your driveway is not an emergency. It's an emergency to me. When I want to get in and out of my house, I should, I should be able to. I can understand, give a ticket first, then ask questions. But the first of all, you violated me, my rights by parking in front of my driveway. I think you should get a ticket. Now, if you don't want to tow them, that's fine. Then you go look for them. That's all I'm saying. But I don't think I should be inconvenienced. Well, one thing that's going to help is if we do, as we put on more officers, they'll be able to uh, write tickets. But right now, they're going from crime to crime to crime to crime. They just, yeah, but I'm talking about for the littering. You know, littering is my biggest pet peeve. Uh, I, that's the one thing I talked about since I've been a trustee. This is my fifth year. I've always done Operation Clean Sweep because I can't stand filthy streets. It, it just, it, it irks me. Uh, but I sat with the chief and the chief has explained, and I do understand that issuing tickets to somebody writing, I mean littering, there's somebody else that's getting robbed or getting shot, or uh, there's a crime that needs somebody, I mean needs a police officer to be there. And so they, they bypass these uh, uh, littering tickets sometimes because they don't just don't have the manpower. But once uh, we get that police department uh, staffing up, then we'll, we'll, they should be able to do that. Sorry, this is Citizens Addressed. I'm sorry. Good afternoon. Normally, I don't talk until I get upset, so I'm not upset today. Y'all usually make me real upset. But, you know, when we begin every meeting, we have a prayer. And I listen to the prayer. And I take effect to it. And it seems to me that if you, don't, if you have your own opinion, and if it's not what others want you to say, then it's all, all of a, a sudden it's political. But if it's a fact, you can't make it political. It's a fact. Now, if we're saying that we're understaffed in the police department, and you have a, a, a policeman assigned to the mayor against the trustee's will, I don't care, y'all don't have to like me, but if it's against the, pol uh, the trustee's will and they say no and they pull them and he is qualified to be a policeman, then he needs to be on the police force and not driving anybody around, That's right. not fixing any fleets, not doing any of that other stuff. He needs to be out on the street securing us all of us yes sir now what I want to know is how many hours does this policeman work and you're saying you're saying to and I heard you I heard you say that the mayor is a part-time mayor and he probably has gotten death threats I don't know if any of you all have ever gotten death threats I'm glad I haven't and I, I don't ex intend to but I still say that I want to know how many hours does he work? When did this happen? And if the other trustees vote yes to remove him, how soon will that take effect? How soon will he get back on the police force? Is he qualified to, to be a policeman or just clean fleets? What is he, what is his qualifications? How did that happen without your knowledge? So, okay, she nothing. She is me. I heard you. She is saying what I feel. Right. I have that right to say yes, what I feel. I feel that every policeman that's qualified to be a police officer in this town should be on the street or if they're uh, uh, at desk duty because of some illness. I understand that. But if they're qualified and they're healthy, they should be out on the street. Good evening. 
Uh, just a couple questions. I, I just kind of got lost in a, in a lot of the rhetoric here. But it seems to me that uh, Chief McCain is asking for firefighters because he's grossly understaffed and the overtime cost is exorbitant. From last year's budget, can you tell me what the overtime figure was? It was, um, I, be I believe, in the, in the 400,000s. 400,000? 400, yes. That we as citizens incurred in our budget? Yes, sir. Okay. The, okay. Now, uh, just simple mathematics tells me if three police officers, and just from this year, is that figure for overtime increasing or disc, uh, uh, dis decreasing from your estimation, Chief McCain? Oh, oh I'm sorry. I'm sorry. My apologies. Uh, right now, uh, sorry. Yeah, right, right now it's, it's increasing. Uh, it will decrease a little bit towards the end of the calendar year because in contractually in November they pick uh, for their vacation time. So vacation's usually heavy in the summertime and being down as well as having injured firemen. Uh, obviously the line of duty death and two individuals that left to other places hurt us this year. So, okay, so, so right now it's up and it, it will decrease a little bit, but overall it doesn't need to be this high because most importantly we want to have more staffing on, on uh, on duty daily. Okay, so, and I, I may be oversimplifying mm -hmm. this, but if you incurred $400,000 in overtime hours, mm -hmm. and you can hire three people, base salary for 134000 to me that seems like a savings overall. Yeah, overtime will never go away. It just yes, just I be understand reduced. that. Yes, I just want to make that clear because that was yeah. yes. you, you can't predict the overtime. Cannot but, predict it. But if there was no overtime, you you were ahead of the game. Correct. And and if we had these three people, yes, that would maybe yes. cause us not to incur overtime. Correct. Yes, sir. Okay. So, okay, I just wanted to get that clear. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, this is this police, uh, I got it lost again. Hired 17, lost 11. That was, I'm sorry, that number is 11 and lost 9. I checked my notes. It is 11. Sit again. Hired 11 since October of 2015 mm -hmm. and lost 9. And the other eight officers that were unavailable due to being off. Um, as being injured or sick. So that, that nine lost is actually not on the force. They're not there. That doesn't include Right, they the were not duty. replaced. No, those nine were not replaced. Okay, and then pretty much the same question. Because you're understaffed, didn't that cause you to incur overtime costs as well? The overtime for the PD for last fiscal year was $588,000. Wow, okay. And we don't just generally, what would the cost of three offices be? A base salary of um, approximately fifty-nine thousand, with a between thirty-five and thirty-eight thousand dollar benefits package on top of that. So let's just say roughly under a um, uh, hundred thousand dollars. So that'd be once if I just used a hundred thousand, that'd be three hundred thousand per officer. Hundred thousand per officer yeah. time three. That's three hundred thousand versus five hundred eighty thousand overtime. Understanding the same thing, you you can't predict overtime. Correct. Right. We could just minimize it as much as we can, but okay. with the um, fluidity of uh, crime, you just can never predict when so, and where. Well, the same. Uh, with in your estimation, the additional three officers possibly decrease that overtime number addition of officers would decrease overtime not dramatically but it will reduce the overtime okay. because of having to not having to fill gaps in shifts and in your estimation it would certainly would make us a safer community it i'd always say the addition of any police officer makes the community safer because you have that much more okay thank you very much yes sir I understand that we don't have the monies, but listening to the dollar amounts that has been paid out in overtime in police and fire, um, I would appreciate the, um, this committee 
taking it back to the full board to really uh, consider very hard where our budget is and what it looks like. Because if we're paying out that kind of money in overtime, understanding we cannot uh, predict overtime pay that I think is be feasible for uh, the trustees uh, to agree um, where the safety and the concerns will be for the residents of the village of Dalton. So I, uh, those are large numbers. And I, Yes, yes. And need public safety is number one, like the chief was saying. You, yes. You equate a dollar to it, it, that's when it gets because we're talking about a, a, a emotional factor. Yes. We all want. We all want to get that. You know, it's an emotional thing, but the reality is we have to pay for public safety. I and agree. again, you we we pay for that public safety through our taxes, yes. through our fees through these types of things. Yes. But once you get these taxes and fees, that money has to be managed. And that's where the trustees come in. And that's why I'm, I'm passionate when I talk about that the chief tells me he's got an officer that he don't know what he's doing. He reports to the mayor. And he, at, at, what, what does he do? Well, he, he takes care of the fleet. And he transports the mayor. And he's his security. But you need officers on the street. I'm not concerned with the mayor getting angry with me or residents getting angry with me. It's about the safety of this community and it costs money. Because these police officers are professional, they're in a union, they get paid well and they should, and they're trained well. One of the things I asked the chief when he was as a trustee, did you all know we have to interview the chief before we accept him? Yes. I asked the chief this question, I'm gonna see if he remembered. Do you remember the question I asked you, chief? I'll tell you, Sandra Bland, Sandra Bland. I said, Chief, tell me, um, do you think Sandra Bland should be alive because it wasn't, it wasn't, uh, the, the police officers should have been sensitive to our community? He said, no, I, I disagree with you, trustee. They should be professional. And I had to go back. I was taken aback by that. I said, that's absolutely right. And this chief makes sure that all the police officers are trained. They're professional, they should be paid the scale that they're paid, but it costs money. The same for the fire department, and the same for the public works department, but you can see the different tenor of this department compared to the department that we had previous to this. Engage the professionalism. Well, I'd just like to say that if you, the, if this committee would seriously go back and talk about the overtime, the six, almost 600,000, 400,000 in overtime, where it would con you can find that monies uh, to add those individuals on. And I want to commend you guys because I do know that it's a hard task, but for the safety, for the residents in the village of Dalton, I just want to say thank you. Well, Ms. Creighton, this board, um, I think, is taking a the most serious look I've seen in five years we're looking at the finances very, very hard every single day. We talk every day amongst each other. We give each other calls. We go over the budget. We go over where, where we can cut. We come up with, we try to come up with ideas. One thing that both chiefs just said is it'll cut over time some. But what we have to look at is we can't add three or four or five hundred thousand dollars to the budget and still end up with overtime because now you're in worse hole than you were. And so we as a board have to look and say, we might have to do something that trustees haven't wanted to do. I mean, you've been here 34 years. I, no, you've been here almost 40 years. And have there ever been a tax increase by the village? No. And so we might really have to take a look at that. But when you talk to residents, they say, I pay too much now. I don't care what you do. Lay off some people. Fire some people. Cut your pay. Do whatever you got to do, but don't raise my taxes. But then, at the same time, they say we need more police and we need more firemen on the street. That's public safety. You got to give us public safety. Other residents are saying, you ain't cutting my trees. My sidewalk been broke up for, for, for 10 years. 
tree hanging down slap me in the face when I walk out the front door. So we got to come up with the money somewhere. But as Trustee Muhammad said, we hate to hear somebody say, find it. You got to find it. It's like somebody bringing a, a car dealer, bringing a brand new car to your door and saying, this is your new Cadillac. It costs you $60,000. Well, I ain't got $60,000. Find it. Find it. No, it's your car now. You find it. You know your budget. You know you don't have it. You can't come up with that $60,000. And that's what we're at right now. But like I said, we do know safety is very important. And I can't vote no on police officers because these homicides are real. These shootings are real. And I can't ask the chief to do the things that he do with no officers. And with that, I'd like a motion to adjourn. Yes. Please go to the mic. Trustee Muhammad used this word, which I don't like it, I'm going to tell you about it. I don't care. That's a bad word for your position. You say you don't care what nobody think, you don't care what nobody. That, that's not a nice word to say, so kind of think of another way if you can, because that's, not, that's a bad word, I don't You're care. You're absolutely right. Okay, and thank one you. thing about us, we should be corrected publicly, and I appreciate you correcting me publicly, and my, my passion got in the way, and as an elected official, you're absolutely right, because after you say you don't care, that means everything else after that was probably shut off, and you're absolutely right. Okay, and that apology was publicly, so I hope it's uh, heartfelt. Um, all right, um, motion to adjourn by Trustee Muhammad. Second. Second by Trustee Denton. Um, Trustee Muhammad? Aye. Trustee Denton? Aye. And I say aye, Trustee Pearson. Aye.